and I make sure everything I do is is something that I'll be proud of for you know 10 years from now 15 years from now hey this is Blaudis and this video is about Beyonce so Beyonce was a creative titan when I was a kid and all throughout my life she's just been completely on top of her game everything she puts out seems to be masterful she really has built an incredible team around her to be able to support her creative vision and she stayed relevant and really active and really on top of her game for her entire career so i wanted to uncover sort of her approach and how she views her creative projects and how she got to this so i hope you find this helpful as well Hi, my name is Beyonce, Beyonce Giselle Knowles, and I'm 16 years old. I just turned 16 about four or five days ago. Um, my birthday is September 4th, 1981. My advice is to keep God first. That's the main thing, keep God first. We go to church every Sunday together, and I think that's what gives this group the bond that we have. Please keep God first first and pray every night and be serious with your prayers also stay humble I know we're gonna stay humble if you ever meet me and I have a little attitude just slap me just slap me right back in the shape and if you want to do something put your mind to it focus on that one thing don't worry about everybody else trying to distract you and keep you far from your dreams because it's a lot of haters out there and they're gonna try to keep you away from your dreams but don't listen to them just focus on what you're trying to do, and I promise you, you're going to get it if you work hard at it and you keep God first. For me, like I said, I, I grew up watching my family struggle, and I grew up with a family that was successful but not born successful. And I believe with hard work and with a goal and, and love and positivity, then eventually we're, we're going to be fine. Um, I still am not into parties, but I wasn't, you know, when I got out of school, when I was a teenager, when I was in my 1920s, then I started, you know, growing up. But before that, I focused on my music. So fortunate and so blessed. and. I know that my mom always told me that my grandmother was in the church lighting candles and praying for her. And I am a result of my grandmother's prayers. And my mother prays for me all the time. And I pray for my daughter all the time. And God is real and God lives inside of me and inside of all of us. And it doesn't matter where I am, I know that and I feel it. Like right now, I'm hot. You know, I, it's a tingling, it's like, it's love. It's, I feel it when I look at my child, I feel it when I look at my husband, it's God. I'm often asked, what's your secret to success? The shorter answer, put in that work. There may be more failures than victories. Yes, I've been blessed to have 24 Grammys, but I've lost 46 times. That meant rejection 46 times. Please don't ever feel entitled to win. Just keep working harder. Surrender to the cards you are dealt. It's from that surrender that you get your power. Losing can be the best motivator to get you even bigger wins. So never compare yourself to anyone else. There will be wins and losses. There will be tears and laughter. You'll feel the shades of life deeply. Now with success comes challenges. With your wins, you may start to notice people spending a lot of energy trying to tear you down. Try not to take it personally. Unfortunately, it's something that comes along with success. Whenever you feel like you're not in control or the world is against you, let that vulnerability motivate you into greatness. That's how I found my true self. I remain a work in progress, and that's the beauty of growth. I've been happiest when I let go and allow life to show me the next move. When you bet on yourself, you're making an investment into your own future. When you choose to spend your valuable time thinking, speaking, typing, negative thoughts, you're investing in something that will give you absolutely no return in your investment. And I feel like after so many years, 16 years, I've only shared who I am 
through my music. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that I feel like that mystique is very important. Mm -hmm. And there are things that I still just don't feel comfortable talking about or, you know, tweeting about. Exactly. <laughs> I know that you don't tweet a lot, but you don't have time. You're a mom. I don't have time. Yeah. And I think for me it's it's so much fun to to tell my stories through photography. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So um that's that's what I, I chose to do. It's not the quantity of things I do, it's the quality. And I'm way more selective and uh, more specific, more involved. I am really picky. And I make sure everything I do is, is something that I'll be proud of for, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Well, you say, <laughs> you say in the HBO, Life is But a Dream, you say, yeah, I learned the difference that business and polite don't match. Mm -hmm. And I said, Amen to that, sister. It's true. Yeah. People just push you as far as you allow them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm learning that you can be kind and be strong. But, like I said in the doc, I have to be fair to myself. Mm -hmm. Actually, there was less pressure because I didn't tell anyone. And it was all about the music. I used to go and write in the studio just for fun. And when you do so many records and you have the pressure, then that kind of goes away. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go back to that, where it was just me and the songwriters, and we just had little jam sessions and had conversations and made it fun again. Mm -hmm. And it, it allowed me to not think about labels or think about radio stations or think about what's commercial. I just had fun, and I think the record came out a lot better because of that. But my parents did teach me the value of education how to be authentic in my actions, and how to celebrate individuality and the importance of investing in myself. Dear graduates, please remember to take a little bit of time to give thanks to your family members and the community who's been such a big support system for you. So I hear that you're um, a big fan of Beyonce. I love her. And so has she given you any kind of advice or? or... Yeah, she actually wrote me this cute little letter and. She signed it with her autograph, it was so cute. Um, when I first met her and she wrote, um, she was telling me just let loose when you perform and just have fun and be in control. How did you find time to get married? Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's difficult because I had to really learn how to have boundaries and, and um, how to have balance, I'm sorry. Um, That's both. You need both. I need boundaries and balance. And, and it was great because um, it's something that I never have really talked about. And I still feel like it was difficult because I'm, and it still is because I'm so excited about it. Mm -hmm. But it's important that I keep things that are pure and real in perspective and I keep it separate from, from my performance life. Yeah, but do you like being a wife? Do you like being a wife as opposed to a girlfriend? I like definitely... Um, <laughs> like, and I'm just asking you this because, uh, you know, I, I, I never married. I chose not to marry. But I always love it sometimes when uh, guys will say, you know, that's my wife, or my wife called, or I got to get this for my wife. You know, just when you hear the word wife and yeah. you know that he's talking about you, do you like that? Do you go, mm-hmm? <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it feels great, but I can say to make sure you have your own life before you're someone else's wife. But know that stepping out is the best thing you can do for self-discovery. I know how hard it is to step out and bet on yourself. There was a pivotal turning point in my life when I chose to build my own company many years ago. I had to trust that I was ready and that my parents and mentors provided me with the tools I needed to be successful. But that was terrifying. The entertainment business is still very sexist. It's still very male dominated. And as a woman, I did not see enough female role models given the opportunity to do what I knew I had to do, to run my label and management company, to direct my films and produce my tours. That meant ownership, owning my masters, owning my art, owning my future and writing my own story. Not enough black women had a seat at the table. So I had to go and chop down that wood and build my own table. Then I had to invite the best there was to have a seat. That meant hiring women, men, outsiders, underdogs, 
people that were overlooked and waiting to be seen. Many of the best creatives and business people who, although supremely qualified and talented, were turned down over and over as executives at major corporations because they were female or because of racial disparity. And I've been very proud to provide them with a place at my table. One of the main purposes of my art for many years has been dedicated to showing the beauty of Black people to the world, our history, our profundity, and the value of Black lives. Now, I've tried my best to pull down the veil of appeasement to those who may feel uncomfortable with our excellence. <laughs> <laughs>